Hi everyone, today I want to quickly show you how to take your Visual Studio Code with Copilot extension and power it up with MCP servers. As a reminder, GitHub Copilot itself requires an underlying LLM when it's running in agent mode. If you're using the free tier, uh, by default you'll have access to some of OpenAI's and Anthropic's models. If you're using Olama, then of course if you've got a model up and running on your system, you can use that. If you're using Gemini or Grok, you'll need to bring in an API key and add that. So MCP or Model Context Protocol servers allow you to basically connect GitHub Copilot with other services. Today I will be demonstrating with GitHub's own MCP server as a demonstration of using a streaming HTTP server that requires authentication. And then also locally using an EO4j database using the Cypher MCP server that will be spun up locally on your system through a sub-process managed by UV. So UV will need to be installed if you're following along with this. Jumping into Visual Studio Code, the first thing you'll need to do is make sure you have the Copilot extension added. So here, just you can search for Copilot. And what we're going to do is we're going to install both of these, which is the chat and the pilot. So after installing GitHub Copilot, you'll see the Copilot's icon appear to the right of the search slash command palette uh, bar here. Just click on this, open chat, and you'll get access to the agent mode. And you can see down here, uh, by default, it might be in the ask mode to switch this to agent. And then here you can switch models. If you want to add your own keys or change models, you can click the manage models button. And for example, if you go to OpenAI, click configure this, you can add in your own key if you have one already. Okay, so there are a couple places for adding in MCP servers. The first one I'll show you is actually right here in the extensions marketplace. So if you delete this out, for, you'll see that MCP servers pops up uh, under the extensions tab now. And what you can do is you can click the browse MCP servers button. And at some point it will open up in your browser. So that takes us to a vetted list of MCP servers by VS Code. You can see here you have quite a few options. So I'm just gonna click on the install GitHub Copilot. Yes, open in VS Code. Once it's here in VS Code, you'll have to also click on the install button here. And this will kick off the auth process. Allow, and I'm gonna select this other account because I'm running out of free credits. Authorize. Going back to VS Code, MCP server should now be up and running. So I can double check that by clicking on this uh, tools icon in the chat window. If you scroll down, you'll see MCP server GitHub. It looks like it's enabled. And you can see all the various tools that it has. And you can actually enable and disable certain tools here. Uh, if you do that, you'll have to restart the chat window, I believe, for the effect uh, to take. Okay, so I can just test, uh, I'll just ask the agent here real quickly, uh, how many GitHub repos do I have? I have two public GitHub repos and three Piper repos. Okay, great. So this MCP server works. Now, when you add MCP servers this way through the extension, this will actually be added to your user settings. So this MCP server will be available to all your instances of Visual Studio Code. So you can double check that by clicking on this gear icon here, going show configuration JSON. And here you can see the path is uh, for my user here. So if you want to manually add in servers that are not part of that vetted list from Visual Studio Code, you can add the additional configuration here, or you can go to your project folder and you add in a .vs code folder, a hidden folder, and add in a mcp.json file. Now here you wanna drop in kind of your standard configuration for an MCP server, except instead of MCP server, you're gonna put in just server. So just like what we saw earlier, if we go back to here. Oh, so if we take this, copy it and put it into MCP JSON, and then just to be different here, I'm gonna remove GitHub. So here I'm going to go to Neo4j's Cypher MCP server and grab the configuration from the readme file right here. Copy this, go back to Visual Studio Code, and I'm gonna put this in here. So it's good to namespace this, and I'll demonstrate why later, um, but especially if you have multiple 
MCP servers to the same service, right? So to like multiple uh, Neo4j instances, for example. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do here is gonna modify this so that instead of putting the password right into this MCP JSON file is to have it inputted as kind of a protected variable. To do this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some text placeholder here. You're gonna do open and close braces, input, input, and we'll do Neo4j password. And then here in the inputs, we're gonna put in a entry for a password entry. Okay, so type needs to be prompt string. It's almost there. Password true. Look here, I made a mistake. There needs to be a money sign. Okay, so maybe there's a chance I have the, an old wrong password in here. So I'm just gonna change this. Save and oops, let's see if I can restart this. Uh, start server. Trust. So you'll see the request for the password is here in the search slash uh, command prompt area. Could be easy to miss. Okay, connected and discovered three tools. Perfect, that is how many tools this server has. So let me launch a new chat window to see if that works. How many nodes are in my database? Okay, great. So yes, when you modify the configurations, start a new chat window. That is probably your best bet. If you want to check on your servers later, uh, one of the best spots is to go down to this tools icon in the chat window. And I'll scroll down to GitHub here. You can see here, I've got Neo4j databases. So if I had multiple MCB servers connected to multiple databases, here, again, if I namespace it by whether it's at the project level or the user level, then I know which one I'm communicating with. One option that's on by default as well for adding in MCB servers in Visual Studio Code is auto discovery. And let me show you that, MCP. So if you scroll down here, MCP discovery enabled. So what this will do is it will pull in the MCP configurations from other tools like uh, Cursor or Windsurf. And actually when I first started this, I couldn't get the local instance of the configuration working because I had a cursor setting that was overriding the JSON configuration I had locally. So be aware if you're using these other tools and you have different configurations in there, you may want to turn off this auto discovery. But if you are wanting to reuse those tools, just use auto discovery and you wouldn't have to add the MCP servers like I just showed you. So as a recap, uh, places where you can configure MCP servers is down here in the gear icon in the chat window. And you scroll down, you can see your active MCP servers and enable, disable particular tools if you wanted to. You can also go back to its configuration. If you click on this gear icon here, it will open up the appropriate MCP JSON file. You can also go up to the top again here, do a carrot and MCP, list your servers, and you can interface with them also through here. So you can start, stop them, pause them, uh, and update its configuration. And again here in the left, if you scroll down and you click on this world icon, internet icon, you can browse that list of vetted MCP servers. You can conf reconfigure the existing servers you have running already here, right? Start, pause, restart, show configuration. And there's another spot here. There's a gear icon. If you click on this and then MCP servers, I had presumed this would take you to one of the files, but every time I click it, Nothing appears to happen, so I'm not sure what that button does. Okay, so now that you have an agent that can talk to different MCP servers, you can combine and use those resources to do interesting things. All right, so that's how to add MCP servers to your Visual Studio Code and Copilot setup. Hope that was useful for you. My name is Jason Koo. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.